There she is. This is Bianca. She's super shy. <laughs> She's my daughter, the apple of my eyes. And I thought I would start this video with something that she told me a while ago. I'll explain the story, but I'll let her tell you like a real pro. Take it away, girl. Can I say it? Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'm You're happy? Do that or? Okay. So they laugh at me because I'm different, but I laugh at them because they're all the same. Yeah, come on. Handshake. All right, you go, girl. Wow. Isn't she lovely? Yeah, she is, man. <laughs> the apple of my eyes. So um, let me give you a little bit of context. She told me that sentence when we were sitting at a cafe at her school. When we had just arrived in Australia, we had been here for maybe three months. She was just getting around new school, new place, new house, new friends, new church, dealing with all of that, you know, leaving family and everything behind and, um, you know, teenager, hormones, all of it. And then we're having this coffee. I noticed she's a bit different and then she just strikes that scent. They laugh at me because I'm different. I laugh at them because they're all the same. I'm like, my daughter's a genius. <laughs> and I'm like, that. I've been actually thinking about that for nearly a year because that pushed to me to, to consider this idea of fitting in. You know, when we came into Australia, we had to fit in. It's a different culture. I come from a Latino culture, you know, like we're loud. And right here, people are more reserved and you, you have to fit in. And I've been thinking about what does it really mean to fit in. I think that's a good idea to discuss. Like, why, why do we fit in? And the best, I, the best analogy that I can use, I, I, I love analogies, is this comparison between two instruments, the thermostat and the thermometer. I'm, I'm sure you know that. Like, the thermometer is an instrument that we use to measure the temperature of a person or a room or an environment. It's just measure. The thermometer is, is passive. It's reactive, so the temperature is set at that point and it just measures. The thermometer is the, the closest of these two instruments that I can think about this analogy of fitting in. The thermometer is not leading anything, it's not changing anything, it's not affecting anything. If there is anything that happens when you try to fit in, it is that we, we abstain from some of our own characteristics and absorb some of their characteristics. You know, we abstain from some of ours and we absorb some of theirs. It's sort of like we're becoming this common thing. You know, it's a it's a learning curve. They call it learning the culture. That That's how a thermometer works. Now, on the other hand, there's the thermostat. The thermostat is, is, a, is a piece of technology that in your air conditioning unit, for example, there's one. And when you walk into a room and if it's too hot, you're going to set the temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius, and in a few minutes, the temperature is gonna be set at 20 degrees. Because the thermostat is active, it's not passive, it's not reactive, it's active, it determines, it, it dictates the temperature of the environment, it influences the temperature of the environment. It's, it's not the same as a thermometer. You know, this, this idea of fitting in is prevalent in our culture. Our school system is the same. The school system works with something that we call um, homo homogenization. <laughs> it's a standard, it's a lot of zations, but it's like, it, it, it's trying to bring everyone to the same level. You know, it's leveling down. It's, it's trying to make everyone look the same, feel the same, be the same, speak the same, walk the same. It's, it's bleach, it's, it's not colorful, it's not funny, it's just boring. You know, that's fitting in. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't like that idea. I've, in a way, I think I was raised to be a thermostat, if I could say that, you know. It's very hard for me to fit in in anything. It's very hard for me to adapt to any culture and um, sometimes that's pretty bad and maybe you, you can relate. Uh, people think you are arrogant, people think that you are off the top, think too much of yourself and I get it, you know, most geniuses throughout history, they were misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's the case, like if I'm, if I'm to be misunderstood, I'm happy with that. But that's, that doesn't help me fitting in. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm no genius. But I don't, I don't like the idea of fitting in because I think 
we are unique pieces. We are unique pieces. You know, we, we, we were created unique. That's a very creative name, unique. I don't think we should be fitting in. Now, I'm not saying that we're never gonna follow anything, we're never gonna adapt because that's an absurd. But what I am saying is instead of all, oh, everyone looking the same, feeling the same, being the same, behaving the same, I think we should think as a commonality of individualities. Well, that's philosophical. Like it's, it, it, we have a lot of individualities, a lot of intricacies, but we all, it's not that we are all the same, but we are going and walking in the same direction. Now here's a question, it's a challenging question. If fitting in is letting go of a lot of who we are and we are unique, why is it that so many people try so hard to fit in? We, we know like amongst youth, uh, peer pressure problems, getting into drugs and alcohol and all of that, like why do we need to fit in? I, I, I can only think about one thing, it's, it's our primal instincts, we are primal animals. And thousands of years ago, if we didn't fit in, we would die because you would live in a tribe and if you go out to hunt, the animals would come. So you, you, the head, you would have to fit in in a tribe. And granted, I would rather fit in to survive than stand out to die. I think anyone could agree with it. <laughs> but I think we have evolved since then. I, I don't think we are that tribal, primal, instinctive animals anymore. You know, I, I remember there's a phrase that I love by this um, author and writer, uh, George Bernard Shaw, I think that's his name. He says, reasonable man adapts himself to the world. Unreasonable man insists on adapting the world to himself. Therefore, every progress is dependent on unreasonable men. Let that sink in for a while. We are only at the stage we are at as a society, as a species, because unreasonable people pushed the envelope. They moved forward against the tide. You are unique. There's no one like you. I remember when I, the first time I migrated out of Brazil, I'm originally from Brazil, okay? That's unique. And I migrated to New Zealand. And one of the first jobs I held was a telemarketing job. Now, the funny part about this is that I couldn't speak English. Can you, can you understand? They're like, I, I don't even know how they hired me. But I used to work for this. And obviously, they had the script and I could read it. My English was very broken. But again, being a very hard person to adapt to anything, I hated the scripts. We have scripts on the things that we do and I barely read the scripts. But I, I, we had them. And, but in a few months, I felt like I was performing very below my own expectations. And I realized that the only thing that I didn't have that they had was the language. They could speak English properly, I couldn't. So I started to feel bad and it was noticeable. Management came and talked to me. And then I met this guy, my first ever mentor. His name was Vince Fong. He was the top tier manager, corner office, window to the street, beautiful view kind of guy. And he took me under his wings and he spent a few days coaching me. And one of the things that I can remember now, because at the time my English was still broken, he said, Pedro, you have to understand what a SWOT analysis is. And I'm, I'm sure you've seen this before. That was the first time that it came across uh, my knowledge. And he said, if you are smart, you will understand that your accent is actually, is actually your asset. And I'm like, oh, wow. And looking back today, I could actually build a message around this, but my accent, my difficulty speaking English actually became my asset. Because instead of doing the normal script, I would say, look, it's Pedro calling and I'm from Brazil. Instant conversation happened. We're talking about soccer, beach, you know, all of that, you know? So, and that only goes to say, I'm unique. You are unique. You see this, let, let me see if I can make this right. You see this? This is your fingerprints. I mean, this is my fingerprints, <laughs> but it's a fingerprints. And do you know that right now, at this very moment, today is the, I'm recording this, and today is the 10th of January, 9.46 in the morning. Do you know that at this very moment, 
there are 8 billion fingerprints around the world and none of them are the same. Wow. None of them. There is not one person like you. And to get it even better, every person who ever lived on this planet before you, thousands of years ago, and every person who will ever live on this planet for thousands of years to come, if we manage to keep the planet for that long, there will never be any other fingerprints like yours. You are unique. No one is like you. Your iris in your eyes, it's even more complex. It's unique. There is not one iris like another one. Now your DNA, I could talk about your DNA. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, but your DNA, I'm pretty sure your DNA is unique. Like there's no other DNA like yours. Not even if you, you have a twin brother or sister, it's not the same. And, and the funny thing about the DNA, um, you know, you remember the story about clones? <laughs> we are not clones. We are created original, unique pieces. We, we originated. <laughs> Therefore, we are original. Everything we do is unique. Everything you are is unique. And not only you are unique, but there is an element of uniqueness in everything. Let, let me give you, let's just uh, come with me on this trip. It's, it's going to sound crazy, but you, you, there is a point in all this. If you go to your window at night or maybe outside and you just look up and you look to the skies and you, you look at the stars, what you see there is a very limited block of space of everything that there is out there. And I can guarantee you, you won't be able to count the stars that you see, let alone the ones that exist in our little atmosphere let alone the ones that are still shining in our galaxy. And like, just putting it out there, I'm not an astronaut, but we have been told that there are billions of galaxies with trillions of stars, each one of them with a unique representation of gases and plasma and energy and neutrons and all of that's unique. Like it's, did you know that God, like, there were, once there was a conversation that God was talking to this guy and he says like, look, look to the skies. Can you name the stars? And the guy's like, uh, no. And God goes like, yeah, I can. I created all of them. All of the stars, all of the universe, everything that's been created, all of the galaxies, all of the chemical combinations, all of that God created. And you boil it down, everything in our planet. Man, just look, just look, do, do you know that if you go on the beach, you go on the beach, and you stand on the shore and you see the waves coming in and out, there will never be a wave that will come in to the exact same place that the other one came. <laughs> My daughter does that. <laughs> Mind blowing. You know, the waves are unique. The end, like there's so much under the ocean that we don't even know yet. You know, up in the skies, under the ocean, like everything around us is so unique. And I don't understand why people want to fit in and copy others. You're unique. I'm unique. You boil it down even more. Like the human beings, we're all unique. We are created unique. But the beautiful thing is that we are created unique from one mode. Ooh, now we're talking. One mode, and I'm not talking about mud. I'm not talking about clay. I'm not talking about the first man ever created. I'm talking about our spirit. It's one mode, God. God is so diverse that he created all of these things, yet so unique that he created us, his image. I'll give you something else to think about just because we're talking about curiosity. Do you know that between us, the human species, and every other animal that we can catalog, in our DNA, 90% of our DNA code is just the same. Meaning, you and the elephant are 90% similar. You think, this is like, actually, that blows my mind. You and every other animal that we can name, and I'm probably making a mistake here, but it's around there. 90% of the DNA is the same. 10% is different. Now, when it comes to humans, and that's why I think like the, the stupidest thing that we could ever do is wars. Okay, because humans take this. 
black and white, yellow or brown, Asian, European, Latinos, although I do think Latinos are very different, but Latinos, everyone, like we are, we are 98% the same, male or female, whatever you think you are, we are 98% the same. Only 2% of our DNA is actually different from one another. Yet, we're the only species that kill each other for no reason. Why? I think we need to rethink all of these things. If our moat is God and it's so unique, so amazing, why are we not performing just like he told us to do? I think um, to bring this conversation to a modern term, God is the source code on a computer language. He's the source code. He's the origin of everything. We are just the files. We come out of the source code. But for some reason, the reason why I think we kill each other, the reason why I think we destroy the environment in order to survive, the reason why we classify this as progress, but it's actually regress. The reason why all of that happened is because us as a file, we have disconnected from the source. And we are like, we have all the information inside of us, but for some reason we got lost. And you're probably asking yourself this question at this point after watching a few of my videos. Why do you always carry this Bible with you? Well, the idea is that every conversation we have, as, as much more than it can, it, it, as it can become, it's all in here. You know, Jesus said once, I think it's in the story that John told, John was a good friend of Jesus. So they, they were buddies, you know, good mates, they say here in Australia. Best mates, besties, you know. <laughs> They're bros, bad boys for life. That's, that's Jesus and John, JJ, double J, you know what I mean? So they, they, were, they were very close. And John said once that Jesus, Jesus actually called himself the tree. He said, I'm the tree and you're the branches. God is the vine dresser, like the, the guy who takes care of the things. No, so, so he's orchestrating the whole thing. We're just like the Jesus is the tree, and we're the branches. And the point of the branch is to bear fruit. Meaning, the point of the branch is to bring meaning to life. It's to, you know, th there are some fruits that are described in the Bible. You know, you're compassionate, you love one another, you're patient, you, you know how to deal with situations. That's, that's the point. So, the branch will only bear fruit if it's connected to the tree. Because if we break that branch off the tree, there is no life in the branch. Now, I, I know I've said before many times, I don't want to be churchy, but I think now this, this is the time for this. If you're watching this, and if you feel like your life is somehow fruitless, you know, it's meaningless, you go back and forth and you do the things, but there's no meaning behind what you're doing. Maybe what you're missing is not a new goal, a new challenge. What you're missing is the life that comes from the tree. It's the information that comes from the source code. You've been somehow, we all have, we all have, I'm guilty of that you. We all have, walked away we all have been disconnected to some degree but the journey that jesus puts himself into is a journey that later on another guy in the bible very cool guy called paul he he calls it a ministry of reconciliation which means we bring back the value of our own life that's that's the ministry of reconciliation um we we got disconnected we have walked away and Throughout our life, the point is, the goal is, the final result is, connect back to the tree. And when that happens, you bear fruit. And the result of bearing fruit is that you will see your uniqueness. It will be recognized. Not fame, but recognition is different. Your fruit will speak for itself. And that, my friend, is the secret of a happy life. Forget everything else. The secret of a happy life is drinking from the source that is the tree. So my invitation for you today is to think about this. Um, we don't need you fit in. You are good just the way you are. God created you the way you are. And I know it's risky in the, in the, in the, the way we live in society today. It's risky to say this. But God created you the way you are. The good news is He loves you so much that when you come to him, when you connect again, he'll show you the path to change. There is the myth, there is a myth in the world that says that people don't like change. I disagree with it. 
I, I, I'm pretty sure people like change. Change is actually the only absolute in life. The only thing I can guarantee you, actually two things. Number one, we're all gonna die. And number two, things are gonna change. This, this is it. Everything else, it's up for grabs. But the two absolutes in life, we're all gonna die and things are gonna change. It's not that people don't like change. People don't like being pushed into change because the harsh reality is as people, we don't know, I don't know what you need to change. And you don't know what I need to change. And most of the times, I don't know what I need to change. I'm too blind. And you don't know what you need to change in your own life. So when people try to push us into change, it hurts. But when God starts the changing process, it doesn't feel like change. It feels like progress. It feels like growth. And growth hurts, but it will be beneficial in the future. We all need to grow. I'm sure you want to grow. We all need to reconnect. So next time someone asks you, or next time someone requires you to fit in, don't. Don't fit in. Don't give in. Be unique. We need you to be you. The world needs you. Your family needs you to be you. There is no better version of you than yourself. God called you to be you. You lean on him. Let him lead the change, whatever change is needed, because he knows what, how, when, and why we need to change. And you will feel good when he changes you. You'll feel good, trust me. <laughs> That's it. I just wanted to inspire you with that. You know, don't fit in, be you. And if you have enjoyed what this is and what I do, I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching to this point. And, um, it would be nice if you can share this with someone. Like I, I don't really like asking people to do stuff. I think you should do it naturally, but just share with someone. And if you want to know more, there's a link in the description of the video that you can use and you sign up for that. You get some emails, some free stuff. Who doesn't like free stuff, right? <laughs> I like free stuff. All right, you have a great day, a great week. Be blessed and I'll see you on the next time.